Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg is being sponsored by On Q Marketing, Best Buy Benches, OmahaFastFoods.com, Certified Transmission, Omaha Magazine, Monahan Financial, Sholdit, NP Dodge Real Estate, Valpac, Coles Pharmacy, Centrus Federal Credit Union, Ideal Water. Welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that will leave you feeling great about yourself, Omaha's heroes, and Omaha, where we live, work, and play. So park yourself on the bench and have fun. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that you tune into every week to learn about wonderful motivational insights that you can use to improve your life. You also hear about a tremendous nonprofit organization that does great things for the city of Omaha. And as you know, each and every week, we have special guests that based on their background, their successes, each and every one of us can learn from them how to be successful. And you know, there's only one person in this whole city that actually has written for years great stories about great people, and he's done magnificent interviews. Tonight, we get to interview none other than Mike Kelly from the Omaha World Herald. Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I can't wait a little bit later to interview you and see how it feels. All right. And I know my viewers want to do the same thing. So let's start out, and let's talk about foul balls. Now, you know what happens in a ball game. The batter is up and there's runners on base and the pitcher begins to pitch and the ball comes right in to the batter. He swings and it's a high fly ball. Foul. Now, what happens to that foul ball? There are people in the crowd that have come to the game waiting for that very moment for them to put their hands up, for them to take their gloves and to catch that foul ball. Now, they will sometimes be aggressive and we don't want anybody to get hurt but they want to be the ones out of all the people in the stadium to stand up and say, yeah, I got that foul ball. And you know what? They do so much preparation to be recognized. They look for their seats where they have the best possibility of getting a foul ball. They come into the stadium with gloves. They just want to be that hero. That preparation is so terrific because when that opportunity comes along, they want to be the ones to be recognized. Now, let me ask you this question. When you prepare for something in life, do you put as much preparation in life as you do for catching a foul ball? Do you know what the odds are for catching a foul ball? There's only between 50 and 70 that have the possibility to be going into the stands each time. And if there are 35,000 people there, you know the odds are very light. But in life, the odds are with you. The odds are there. All you have to do is transfer everything that you do to prepare for that foul ball into the next opportunity, the next possibility, when somebody is actually there throwing you that opportunity. You got to be ready for it. You got to plan for it because it's going to be there. And by the way, the odds are in your favor so that when you are there and you are able to catch that opportunity, you betcha, whatever it is in life, you get to stand up with your success, with your trophy, and say to everybody, not only did I prepare, but I went ahead and I got it. And you know, at this time of the year, we start watching the new trailers for the brand new TV shows that come out. And you know what's very, very interesting? Many times we are introduced to new stars. We're introduced to people that we have never, ever heard of before. And then all of a sudden, what happened to them? They got their lucky break. They got that series. They got that premiere. They got on the networks. They got on cable TV. And you look at them, and sometimes we say to ourselves, well, why them? How come they got it? Well, here's the answer. It did not happen by accident. They went to acting school. They were waiters. They were waitresses. They went to auditions. They got rejected. And every time they got rejected, how do you think they felt? Well, bad. But what do you think they did? They went out and improved their craft. And then they went out and seeked that one show that matched everything that they were able to do. Everything that they were able to do as far as acting. They got there because they didn't give up, because they persevered, because they had agents and managers representing them. Well, it's the same thing with each and every one of us. 
That opportunity for stardom is there. The opportunity, however, is always built up with rejection. It's always built up with training. It's always built up by trying to find the exact opportunity that matches what you have. So the one thing I challenge everybody to do, when those trailers come on and you see names of people who got their own series and you've never heard of them before, go to the website. Go ahead and Google them. Find out what they went through. And then ask yourself, at what point in your pursuit of the perfect job for you did you actually give up? One rejection was one too many. The training actually stopped. Look at what they did and begin to duplicate that for yourself so your name can go up on the marquee. Your name can get the title that not only you deserve, but that you went for and fought for and got. And at this time of the year, we begin to take a look at report cards for our children, don't we? We tell them every day, come on, Johnny, come on, Sally, get your grades better, put the work behind it. And we always ask them, how was your day in school? Because we know that they're gonna be evaluated, we know that they're gonna be compared against others. And we know what they get graded in, and we know the type of work that they have to put behind it. And we know how proud they are each and every time they come home and they get that great report card. Why? They prepared and they studied. Now the question for each and every one of us is, what about our own report cards? <laughs> yeah, we have report cards. We have report cards of success in business, in professional life, in our spiritual life, in our civic opportunities, in our abilities to help others. And when we go ahead and prepare our report card, are we doing excellent? How are we doing on each and every one of them? What preparation have we put behind it? As much as we pursue the re perfect report card for our kids, we should do the same for us. The challenge that I have for each and every one of us today, and by the way, because it starts today, it doesn't mean it ends tonight. The challenge that we have, I want each and every one of, each and every one of us to prepare our own report cards. I want us to take a look at what we need to do. Do we need improvement? Are we excellent? How do we get along with others? And grade ourselves the same way we grade our children. And you know, it's not by accident that I have Mike Kelly with me because he writes a lot of headlines about people. And we're gonna be asking him a little bit later how he chooses a headline or story. Now, if you were to write your own story about your life, and you have it all mapped out, you have the entire text, what headline would you write about yourself? Would you say, here comes a successful individual who is always successful? Would you say, here is someone who actually had nothing and built himself or herself up? What is your headline? What is it that you wanna be known for? What the first thing people wanna know about you? And when you design that headline, and I'm interested in finding out what your first thought was, by the way, that actually defines who you are. But there's something else you wanna consider. I want you to also imagine the headline that you're gonna be writing about yourself one year from now and five years from now. Because in reality, that's your plan. That's your identity. That's who you are. The text and the balance of the story just continues to fill in. But it's gotta start with that headline. It's gotta start with what you think about yourself. And when you think positive things about yourself, when you think, think about outcomes about yourself, then it becomes absolutely significant for each and every one of us, not only to write our own headline, but to also write our own story. So let's kind of review everything that we talked about so far. You're in that stadium. You've got that foul ball coming your way. You've prepared for it. I want you to do the same thing in life and get the preparations ready. I want you to remember that each and every person who you see on the TV screen, they went through trauma, they went through issues, they got rejected, but they became the stars that you will be. And of course, when you write your own report card, your own report card will be the prediction of the way things will work for you based on the way you plan them, based on the way that you wanna have everything done in your life. And of course, one of the most important things is writing your own headlines. You put these four motivational vignettes together, you use them this week, and you know what's gonna happen? You know it, you're gonna be successful. You're gonna have that smile on your face, and you're gonna tell others how great it is to be you. Now, you know that each week we do a wonderful little story about PSAs, about nonprofits, 
And you know, Labor Day is this weekend, so let me tell you about a local organization called the Heartland Workers Center that is located right here in Omaha, Nebraska. It was founded in 2009, and it was founded to build a community that works for all and whose mission is to improve the quality of life of Latinos in Nebraska. HWC works to accomplish their mission and vision by finding training and developing Latinos who can become leaders in the workplace and community. HWC also works to promote and defend the rights of all workers and to provide opportunities for those developing leaders to be engaged in public life. Through the HWC Health and Safety Training Institute, the HWC provides bilingual Spanish and English training on labor laws, including the 10 and 30 hour trainings for workers in construction and general industries. To find out more information about the great work that they do, please contact the Heartland Workers Center at, by their website, heartlandandworkerscenter.org. And now, the time that you've been waiting for, I know the time I've been waiting for, we're gonna get an opportunity to turn the tables. And when we turn the tables, we're gonna be interviewing Mike Kelly, and we'll see how he feels about it. Mike, thank you, you so got much. All pumped up, Andy. I'm oh. get that foul ball. <laughs> there you go. I've hit a few foul balls in my life. Right, as we all have. Yeah. I'm sure you've hit a lot of fair balls too. A few, yeah. So we certainly want to keep that in, in, the, in the perspective. Thanks. So, Mike, how long have you been with the Omaha World Herald? Well, uh, 44 years. I started when I was 11 years old. Well, not really. I was 21, yeah. fresh out of college. Right. I thought Omaha would be a great place to go for two or three years, and no regrets. So I've loved living here, raising our family here just a wonderful community. As we all know, and one of the things that you do is you always promote Omaha. So my question is, what made you get into journalism? Why did you become a columnist? Well, you don't become a, a columnist right off the bat. You okay. gotta work your, your way up to that. And, and I, I, mean, I love Omaha, but I know we have problems too. So, you know, I'm not a shill for the Chamber of Commerce, sure. although we've got a wonderful Chamber of Commerce here. Yes. So my dad had been a, a newspaper guy in his young years, back uh -huh. in the 30s. Uh, but he had a bunch of kids and then got a, a government job with the IRS for years. So as it turned out, I was the only one of his eight kids that went into what was his love. So it was always a wow. great connection for us. But I can remember when I was about uh, fourth grade for Christmas, I got a little uh, stamp set, you know, uh, with the letters. You know, you can make little headlines. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. So, so I, I, I was going to make my own newspaper. Ah. Back in the 50s, if you remember this, when I was... A little boy, westerns on TV were the big deal. Oh, they were. And there was a show called Tombstone Territory. I remember it. And the newspaper was called the Tombstone Epitaph. I didn't know what Epitaph was. Sure. Went. So I made my little newspaper. I thought it was like Gazette or something like that. And so I made it the Kelly Epitaph. And I was so proud. I showed it to my mom. She burst out <laughs> laughing. That's when I uh, learned what the word meant and expanded my vocabulary. That's fantastic. You know, one of the lessons here for each and every one of us here as a youngster, he had the dream, and he actually called, remember we talked about headlines? Well, he actually called it his paper. And now, of course, he's known for his column. We all read the Mike Kelly column. I know myself, that's one of the first things that I look at each and every day that the paper comes out. So let's go, let's go further. So you're in the journalism. So again, how did you elevate yourself to have this column? Well, I wrote in high school and college. Uh, I got here and, you know, the lowest rung, I was, uh, uh, general assignment reporter in the right. summer, just trying to learn the city. And so over the years, I eventually covered different beats. I covered the police beat, I didn't know that. courthouse, which I enjoyed both those very much. And then city hall for about five and a half years, the whole time Ed Zerinsky sure. was mayor. A lot of people will remember him. Uh, and then a little bit after that. And then I had another couple of years where I was uh, kind of a general assignment, but a lot of it was self-assigned. It was almost like writing a column okay. like I do today, but coming up with stories and just doing a lot of interesting things. And then one day the, my boss, Bob Pierman, was a managing editor and he said he wanted to talk to me after work and I had called home and said, told Barb, sorry honey, I'm gonna be late again. I don't know what this is all about. I'm oh God, I wish this wasn't happening. And we go down to the restaurant and, and I, I kind of call this the highlight day of my career. He offered me my choice of Washington Bureau, Metro editor, or sports wow. editor and sports columnist. And so my jaw kind of hit the, hit the table. Sure. And, uh, and I appreciated his confidence in me. Anyway, I ended up taking the job of sports editor, sports columnist. Uh, did it for 10 years and was replaced by 
two people right. then. So it was just wow. kind of hard to get my arms sure. around it. But I enjoyed those uh, 10 years covering the Huskers. And wow, Creighton I didn't know that about you. Creighton okay. in the College World Series. Right. And then uh, after about 10 years, uh, it, it kind of, it did wear me out doing both jobs and getting out and getting in front of the public, sure, doing lunches sure. and so on. And so then I came back to the news, news side, as we call it. And since then, I've been writing a column for three or four times a week for the last, what, 20, 23 years. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a great job. I'm pretty oh, much allowed to write Anything you what want? I choose. Sure. So. so if there was one or two words that would describe your column, what would those words be? Um, community, because I write about sure. us. Right. And, uh, and people, I community guess. Community people. And how many columns have you written off the top of your head based on community people? I thought oh, about this. Yeah. Well, the number of columns that I've written, including sports and sure. news for 30, uh, almost 33 years, is well over 6,000 columns. That's In fact, I have them right here. Would you oh, like I'm to sure. Look <laughs> I would love I to don't see them. Really. I can't read them on air, but I think that would be a terrific thing for everybody to go to. I'm sure they're available on the website archives if you really <laughs> want to look into no, it. No, I don't want to put you to sleep. But you know, you know the real lesson here is the same thing I was talking about earlier about the TV stars. You just got to work your way up. It takes patience. It also takes skill. And it also takes people to believe in you. But the way you get people to believe in you is to do the job. Do what's asked for you. Have the passion for it. You can see the way Mike is talking. He's got the passion. It's there. So of all the columns that you've written about community people, what's the most memorable one? Oh. There have been so many. I mean, just to mention a, a recent one. There's sure. a young woman, wonderful young gal named uh, Macy Stevens, okay. uh, who had heart problems even in the womb, and eventually uh, grew up, had a number of surgeries, and was a candidate for heart transplant. And she got one, and she's a yeah. teenager now, doing well. Uh, a year or so ago, um, her parents heard from the family of the boy who had died and whose heart she oh, she wow. had. I remember that story, and yes. They, and, they, and the yes. parents decided, we're going to go down because they're going to celebrate this boy's 16th birthday. Birthday, right. And they went down, and Macy said she was not wanting to do this. She wasn't sure. comfortable. Sure. She was like people, people crying, but she ended up being very glad she did. This was down, I think, in Louisiana, Black Baptist Church. She's a white family. They go in, a lot of people there. Uh, and, and the mother of the, of the boy who had, who had died said, where's Macy? Where's Macy? Oh, wow. And call, called her up, and there were tears. And she says, oh. Macy, honey, yeah. can I listen to my baby's heart? Uh -huh. And Shh. put her head on Macy's chest oh. and listen to the beat That's... of her heart. I mean, when you get to tell oh. stories like that, oh, sure. I always say the better the story, the more important it is for the writer not to get in the way of the story. Yes. Your yes. job then is just to let it unfold in, in the most powerful way. And so that, that's a recent one. How do you to... not get emotionally involved in some of these stories? I mean, you're telling me the story. I remember reading the story, and I get an emotional reaction. But you cover so many. Do they get to you? Of course. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, and I, I think if, if they didn't, then maybe I wouldn't be able to write them as well. Sure. I don't know. You don't want to get overly emotional. One of my uh, writing gurus, James J. Kilpatrick, late, uh -huh. late columnist who was, wrote beautifully about writing, says, to write of emotion, be unemotional. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't tear sure, up when you're writing. Sure. It means don't get overly flowery. Don't try to overdo. Don't get right. over the top. Let the story Play, out. play itself and, out. And, and that's the power of a story. And how do you go about selecting stories? I'm sure your phone is always ringing off. Hey, I got a great story for you. Get an email. Hey, I got a great story for you. How do you decide what story your readers want to read? Uh, by what I think would be interesting. Yeah. If it interests me. I mean, I do try. I think I have a feel. I hope so. After all these years sure. for our readership here. Where it's a wonderful community of people who disagree on a lot, a lot of oh, different yeah. things, yeah. but we have some commonalities, and I don't mean just Husker football. A lot of sure. a lot of people love Husker football, and I covered that for for ten years. Good dear friend of mine uh, wrote a column for the Los Angeles Times for twenty years. He's a Nebraska native, Dana Parsons, good buddy. Right, and he's told me a few years ago that he envied me our readership here just because of that 
kind of commonality, commonality. of right. interest. You know, we all, even though we disagree on a lot of things, I think there's a real feeling of community that we're all part of something. There is. You know, each and every one of us, we always think about job satisfaction. And here's a question, which is a very, very important one, and I want the, re the viewers to actually think about this. When I say job satisfaction, how do you measure your satisfaction? And then I'm gonna ask Mike the same question, because you know when you do a good job. So let's hear what Mike says. Mike, how do you feel at the end of a day, or at the end of the week, or at the end of a column? How do you measure your job satisfaction? Well, at the end of a column, typically, I'm thinking, oh man, I could have done this better. <laughs> um, but after a day or so and you see yeah. it in print and you get some response to it I guess that's one way that you get job satisfaction you know you've touched people and when I say touch people I don't mean necessarily emotionally where they get sure. tears you might touch them because it's funny you might touch them because you've provoked them made them a little mad or maybe think a little bit I'm you know I don't see myself as a as a great teacher or I'm trying to provide lessons for people I think what I do if I was describing my column, it's I write about this time and this place. And I want people who read me, and especially those who read me regularly, sure. to feel like that they get a, a feel for what it's like living in the greater Omaha area and Nebraska and Iowa, the Midlands, as we call it, at, at this time. Yeah. And there's just so many wonderful people, people sure. stories, institutions, trends, so would you consider yourself an influencer of people, an influencer of their moods, an influencer of their emotions, and does your column help inspire other people as an influencer? I wouldn't, th I wouldn't think, think right. that. But, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's been nice over the years is how, how people will, will open up and they will, they will trust you. And there have been occasions when I've heard from a family after I've written about someone, something really serious and... Uh, sometimes including deaths in the in the family. Sure. And I'll hear from like a parent and, and they'll say, she told you things she's never told the family. Wow. I'm not trying to say pat myself on the back. I understand. It's just the, the trust that people have in us. And so with that goes this great responsibility to not just make sure the story's accurate, sure. but the context sure. is right, the content is right. So I just feel very fortunate to have the job career that I you have. have. And we are fortunate that you have that Thanks. job and you do it so well. Thanks. Because I don't think there's anybody here in the Omaha area that's not familiar with Mike's column and the impact that it has. But that's today. Where do you see it going in the future? Well, I mean, I think we're still going to be printing on paper for some time to come. A lot of things have changed. Some people say the internet is, is, is killing newspapers. What it's done is I mean, we don't have the print circulation we once did. No right. newspaper does, uh, does because it's online. Right. We now do have paywalls, so you can't just get everything for free like, yes. like it was for a while. But our editors say we have as many readers as we've ever had when you count print and online. So the print side of it, I think we're still gonna be printing. There's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of people that still like having the newspaper in their hands. I mean, I'm one of them. I realize it's generational. Right. We're not going to be cutting down trees right. forever. But I think for the foreseeable future, we'll still print. On They're paper. still print. And how long do you think that Omaha will be able to supply you with enough stories based on community and based on people? Is it ever going to dry up? That will never. That will <laughs> never dry up. I mean, it's and and I and I do. You know, you ask how I, how I get ideas. And sure. So on. Sure. I try to keep my antenna up. I get around town. I read right. a lot. But people do call, they email, always return a phone call. And so, you know, we all, all of us at the paper, we, we welcome mm -hmm. people uh, suggesting stories. So if you could summarize in 30 seconds how people should live a fulfilling life, because you certainly have. Mm -hmm. You've got 44 years, you've got a great family, you're well respected in the community. Give me a 30 second summation and how other people can be a Mike Kelly. <laughs> Wow, I wouldn't want anyone to be. I wouldn't <laughs> sick that on them. But uh, I think just having you know people that you love, have a job that you love, and things to look forward to that you will love doing. I I, I don't know. That's that's a great philosophy. But I think that's kind of how. I, and I, I think it's worth it. repeating. 
people that you love, a job that you love, and something that you always look forward to in the community. Because the important thing here, and in the way Mike answered the question, I think it was fascinating. What is he right about? Community and people. Not just individuals, not just people, but everybody that comes together to form that community. You and me and Mike and everybody are all part of Omaha. And that is what makes Omaha great. That is why Omaha continues to be a very cohesive city. Yeah, we've got differences. Yeah, there are issues in Omaha. But you know what? There is a reason why Omaha is one of the best cities in the world to live. Mike Kelly, you have given us such fantastic insights and we want to continue to read your column every morning we want to and afternoon we want to continue to get that newspaper and say who has mike found for us today by the way if you enjoyed this session of your omaha high with andy greenberg i've got some great news for you we've got somebody coming on next week an individual by the name of randy nog from actors etc he is a based here in omaha nebraska he is a national casting director for both commercials and for movies and he d is gonna teach us not only how to prepare in front of a camera, and by the way, you will need to know that because you'll be on job interviews, you'll be talking to people, but he's also gonna explain what other people look for in you and how to project that. So based on everything that you have seen this week, the question comes up, what are you going to do? When will you begin to prepare for that foul ball? When will you begin to prepare for that new TV show, that report card? And as Mike Kelly has mentioned to us many, many times, what are you going to do to prepare your headline? The answer is, it's up to you. I can't answer that for you. We can give you that information. We can have the guests on air to share that. But if you want to experience it Omaha High, there's only one individual that can do that. Only one? And you know who that is? that person right now looking at this TV screen. So for yourself, put it all together. Get everything lined up for yourself. Get everything lined up for success. And when you're out in the streets and you meet people, remember that you are successful because of what you do. You're successful because of your Omaha High and things that it brings to you. I very much look forward to seeing each and every one of you back next week on your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. And I want you to take this week's show, make it part of yourself, and enjoy everything this week. See you soon. Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg was sponsored by On Q Marketing, Best Buy Benches, OmahaFastFoods.com, Certified Transmission. Omaha Magazine, Monahan Financial, Shouldit, NP Dodge Real Estate, Valpac, Coles Pharmacy, Centrus Federal Credit Union, Ideal Water.